Hey there, my name is Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be sort of like a vlog style update sort of video. I did one of these not that long ago and a lot has changed since then. So I just wanted to sort of update you guys, hang out with you today, show you what I've been up to, show you some ideas that I have. Right now I'm getting ready to make a coffee. My coffee maker was in the background of my most recent um, refrigerator clean out makeover video and I got a lot of questions about it on Instagram and here on YouTube. So I'm gonna show you how this thing works and why I think it's worth the money. My refrigerator, if you didn't see that video, has stayed so organized since I did that. I used a Cricut smart cutting machine to make labels in the refrigerator and it has been a game changer. Highly recommend, I'll put that video right here in a little card so you can watch it if you want to. I'm gonna make coffee. So this is our little Breville Barista Pro espresso machine. I freaking love this thing. Um, I'm not going to make like a hot latte right now so I won't use the steam wand here, but I am going to make an ice latte, which is what I usually make in the afternoon, I'm using some whole milk. I like to put it over ice first. I've got my coffee beans up here in the grinder. Not a pro at making this, but I know nothing about making espresso or lattes and I'm able to use this really easily. Doing a double shot here. Leftover coffee grounds, these go in the trash. And then my espresso is in here. I like to add a little bit of maple syrup as sweetener. Although this, <laughs> this bottle always looks like I'm pouring That's bourbon. Funny. What'd you make? And then I just kind of like swirl it around. Okay, I think that might have cut I me off. Okay, can you open it up? I think my camera might have cut me off, but I just poured over the milk. Ice latte, so good. Yeah. I have not forgotten how hard it is to film with two kids. <laughs> it's crazy. This Breville Barista Pro. It's not exactly cheap. It was our Christmas present to each other, my husband and I, last year. Not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before. And it has saved us so much money. We don't go out for coffee anymore. My husband doesn't buy coffee at work. It is definitely an investment, but it will like, if you're going out for coffee all the time and you like lattes or, or just like fancy drinks and Starbucks and stuff like that, or even if you don't, you go out for coffee and you just buy black coffee or espresso. You're spending like four or five dollars each time. I actually added up my coffee expenses the last year that I was working, and I don't wanna tell you how much it was. But this has saved us so much money because we would like yummy coffee. We wanna be able to have it daily, but we don't wanna spend four or five dollars each, you know, every day. Anyway, highly recommend. What is it? Turn it so I can see. Santa cup. <laughs> All right, let's go do magnet tiles. Come on. Yeah, I love to make the house, but I smashed you for the of the house. <gasps> Look at these. If you have young children or even like children that aren't that young, magnet tiles are so fun. We play with them literally constantly. We build houses, Miles builds houses, I build houses. I just built one and somebody knocked it down. Hmm, I wonder who it was. Miles. It was Miles. So the first little house update that I have is I finally picked a paint color for the house, like the interior, the walls, and I decided to actually paint a lot of it the same color. So like in here, it's navy blue. I'm not a big fan. I'm. I don't know what I'm gonna paint in here actually, so I don't know why I'm in here telling you this. But in this room, it's like a sage green. Um, there's like a lot of different paint colors going on in here. This is like our butler's pantry slash, um, like I call it the galley because it like runs in the middle of the house. Um, possibly in here, definitely our dining room. And I put a little swatch here to show you. Right here, it's White Dove by Benjamin Moore. Show you a better shot. That is two coats. And you can see that the walls are a gray color. And then this is more of like a, it's, it's actually a very soft white. It's not a stark white. The trim is like a cream off white. 
So I am a little worried about like what it's gonna look like next to the trim throughout the house. We have a lot of trim, a lot of trim that needs to be painted. It's all a like cream sort of off-white color and I'm probably gonna save that for later. For now, I just wanna get the walls lighter and brighter, and I know that this is a color that I wanna use because I've looked at a million other swatches, and I've actually used this color before, and the good thing about it is that there's no like weird undertones. There's no gray to it, there's no yellow to it. It's like a just barely off-white without any weird undertones. Um, I normally use Aesthetic White by Sherwin-Williams, but that has a little bit of like a grayish to it. It's a little deeper than what I'm wanting. I'm wanting to brighten everything up. So I think this is the perfect color. Like I said, it's White Dove by Benjamin Moore. If you've used it before, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about it. Um, I think it's beautiful. We had it on our ship lap in our previous home, in our condo. So if you remember that, and I'll try to find a picture to show you, um, but it was like just a perfect, creamy but still bright white really really beautiful and in this room this is our formal dining room which you can see i've been doing some work in here we've got a puzzle going i did get our chandelier moved in here that's another little update our electrician came and installed this it was in the living room and now it is over our formal dining table it is a gray color in here which it's not a bad color it's it's a pretty color, but it is dark, and it's just dark in here often, and I want it to be a little bit brighter, and I have plants in here, and I don't want the colors of the wall like absorbing um, my light, so I'm gonna brighten it up. I also, I, I don't know if I showed this before, but I found this awesome buffet on Facebook Marketplace, and it was really beat up. I'm still thinking about painting it, possibly, but I used this stuff, Restore a Finish. And it, it really like vastly improved the state of it. It still needs some love. And I'll show you guys where I did another little swatch of this paint so you can see what it looks like against a different color, but also because I wanted to see what it looks like against a different color. And it's a little brighter in here. The lighting is better in here right now. So you can see that it is just off-white. It's like still creamy, but still bright. And then you can see our trim is like a cream color. So that'll be interesting. I'm gonna actually paint this room first. This is Miles' room. And it is a lovely shade of green. It's like a schoolhouse green. And I really find it to be clashing with my rug in here. <laughs> so, um, or I should say it's Miles' rug. So I'm gonna paint in here first. And I can't wait, because this rug is awesome. I found it at a like estate sale and it is old and it was dirty and I had to clean it, but it is so unique and so cool. I just love it. So while I'm upstairs, I'll show you what my husband was busy doing while he was off work last week. I've talked about this a lot. I've talked about it in my last video. My closet on a stage in my master bedroom. I could not wait for this thing to go and it is gone. I'll show you real quick what it used to look like. I'm sure whoever put this closet in our master bedroom spent a lot of time and money thinking about it. It was a very sophisticated closet system, but it was open, it was collecting dust, it was driving me crazy. Now, this is what it looks like in our master bedroom. That is where the closet was on that wall. I would eventually, once it is done over here, like to move the bed, that's our bed onto this wall so that it is like coming out this way and I would like to have two sconces here on either side can you picture it <laughs> I don't know it's kind of hard <laughs> but what's interesting about this is we were able to see the original layout once we took up the um, base of the closet and you can see that there was a closet in here that was like the master bedroom closet. This is a closet that goes to the room next door and this was the closet door that they closed off. And then this right here was another closet in the master bedroom. So it was three closets that made up that one closet and it's really interesting to see how they just closed this door up and mostly that on the other side 
um, you would never be able to tell. It's just a wall over here. So this is what my husband spent the last like week doing. He never takes off work. He did and spent it working. I feel bad for him, but I'm also super grateful because we saved a ton of money demoing this. My stepdad came and helped and this is lath plaster, I believe is what it's called. And it is heavy. And these walls were not built to just be taken down and like this old house is amazing in that way. Like everything is very, very good quality. Everything was built to last. And so we had to actually rent a dumpster, put it in our driveway because this closet, like what made up this closet basically filled that dumpster. It was crazy. There is old knob and tube wiring in this wall. So we have an electrician actually coming to make it safe, close it off, um, run new wiring in here and add the sconces, add two outlets, um, run new wiring to the uh, ceiling fixture here, which is a fan, which I know some of you love ceiling fans. I hate ceiling fans. I think they're an eyesore and I don't really like a fan. I don't use a fan, so I'm gonna be taking that out eventually. And I'll have him just run new wiring to that so it's nice and safe. And he'll add switches over here on the wall. And then we've got to navigate. Actually, first, let me show you what the knob and tube looks like. It's just hanging up here. It's off. We just tied it up until he could come and fix it. Um, but what it does is it actually attaches to these porcelain knobs here, um, which keeps it away from the framing so that it's not touching the wood where it can get hot and start a fire. Basically why a knob and tube doesn't exist anymore and why um, it's considered to be unsafe is because if it does for some reason during a renovation, I guess, touch some framing, which actually we saw some touching some of the framing in this wall when we were taking it down. And I was like, that's not safe, like based on what I've read. So it's really kind of crazy stuff. Lots of houses still have it apparently. Um, if you have knob and tube wiring in your house, please leave me a comment, tell me. If it's like original, if it's been there, if it's safe, I'm so curious. It's like such a interesting thing to me because there's so much of it in this house and it's 120 years old and it's been safe so far, knock on wood. So I'm like, why can't you just keep it if it's safe, if it's like set up correctly? And I think it's the reason is because when people renovate, they make mistakes just like I found on this wall where there was a piece of framing up against the knob and tube. That's my guess. But anyway, let me show you the floor. So we have to navigate. We don't want to like replace all of the flooring in here. So we have to figure out how to um, sort of lace some flooring that matches into this. We want to do it ourselves. So that's going to be a big project. And then, like I said, we did hire an electrician, but we will try to DIY this wall here and close it up. So that would be, that will be a very interesting project as well, because I'm not really uh, familiar with that. It'll be our first time doing that, but we plan to do it ourselves. And I'm trying to be better about writing on my blog and using my blog. It's there for a reason. If you have not been to my website, it's meganbellmade.com. I do write some blog posts every now and then. Sometimes I don't film a video on a project just like this, this closet I'm not planning to film. So I'm writing blog posts, taking photos, and putting as much information on there as I can. I'm in the middle of writing a blog post all about the progress on this. So if you would like to be updated on that, please go to my website, get on my email list. I will send you an email when it's up. Okay, best 50 bucks I've spent on this kitchen and every previous kitchen I've lived in. Um, let me just show you. Looks like a regular cabinet. You open it up, <gasps> a pull out trash can. Yes, worth every penny, super easy to install. Um, an even better feature is that you can actually attach this trash can to the door so that whenever you um, open the door, the trash can comes out with it. This is actually kind of a pain in the butt because you have to open the door and pull this out. I just haven't bought that part yet and done it. Um, but even without it, this is like such a game changer. It's so nice not to have like that freestanding trash can in the middle of the kitchen. That's such an eyesore. It's hidden in the cabinet. Okay, now Isla wants to show you her room because there's been some updates in here. So let me show you. So it's by no means done, but I did get some things sort of rearranged. I got this awesome vintage 
replica from the industrial cottage which you can order their stuff online but they are a local shop how beautiful is that i love it her crib which i put this on instagram and i also did a blog post i'll put the link below this is the ikea snuggler crib and i actually stained it and it looks really good and way more expensive than it was it's like a hundred dollar crib and there are cribs this color going for like $600. I think it looks awesome. All the information on it is in the blog post that I'll have linked below. Super easy to do. And I kind of put it in the middle here. She has this, these built-ins, which I have not like decorated. There's just kind of stuff there. And I uh, ordered this awesome rug from Cordon Cotton. Gorgeous vintage rug. A little smaller than I was expecting, so I just like layered it underneath or on top of this jute rug from Ikea. But I think it looks really good. And if you remember this awesome wardrobe that I made over, did a video on that. It's blending in a little bit too much with this wall color. I haven't decided if I like that or not. As you can see, if you get closer, the wardrobe is sort of like a green and then the walls are sort of a gray. I'm just not, not really loving that. But the gray goes really well with this rug. So this will probably be the last room I paint in the grand scheme of things. And then she has a closet here, which is, I think this was the previous color of this room of super bright blue. Not sure if I'll get to that anytime soon either, but we'll see. Okay, the lighting here is crazy. I'm trying to take you guys down to my basement. I have a, there we go, project I've been working on in my basement. Um, sort of in the background. I am filming a video for it though, so you can look forward to that when it's done. I'll just show you. I love this house because I have a basement. Yes, there is a fireplace in our basement. I don't know if it works, but it's there. Um, but I have a place to work. I have a place to do things. And this is a Ming style coffee table, which I already removed the center of, and it has been such a labor of love, but this is what I'm working on right now. It had two layers of paint. I'll show you real quick what it used to look like. It was blue, like a really bright sort of baby blue. And underneath that was red or orange, I think. And so I had to scrape two layers of paint off of this thing. And um, now I'm going back and sanding and fixing and I removed the center part of it which is right here because it was just really, really gross and in awful, really awful condition. And I actually, just this past weekend, cut a new piece to go in the center and I made it out of plywood, which I'm not really sure how that's gonna look because there's not like a, like a great, like the grain is sort of different on this. It kind of goes sideways, but um, put that in the center and I'll have to stain it to match it as close as I can. But this is gonna go in the living room. It's such a unique, piece. I don't see a lot of stuff like this. It's very feminine and I thought it'd be really pretty to put in the living room. I needed like a sort of like more like traditional long like rectangular shaped coffee table in there so I thought that was perfect. I got it for like 15 bucks at a, like a random yard sale that I happened to just drive by and had time because I was by myself and didn't have the kids or you know Sam was like with them and I had like literally five minutes. I like ran through, found the table, Got it for 15 bucks, brought it home, and it has been so much more work than I thought it would be. Like I said, I am filming a video about it. If you're curious on how to take a painted piece, which is something I've, I've never really done on my channel. I paint furniture all the time, and I love to paint furniture. If there is something that just is just beyond salvageable or would look better painted, I don't mind painting. I know some people are totally against painting wood, um, but also there's just this huge kind of question mark. I think, can I take a painted piece and make it wood again? Make it like a natural wood. How do I get there? What are the steps? How do I strip furniture? How do I remove the paint? That video is going to answer a lot of those questions and it is a ton of work. It's just so much work. And I think if it's a really good piece, it's worth it because I think this one is. So I'm super excited about that. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me again today. I shared a recent Instagram post. I would love for you to go read it. It, it explains a lot of like how I've been feeling about social media, about being online and having children, the differences between my New Year's resolutions before I had 
kids and now. I think it just explains how I've been feeling lately and why I haven't been as present on Instagram and YouTube. And I'm trying to kind of go back to basics, be more traditional when it comes to being on the internet. I don't, I'm not into reels. I don't want to be on TikTok. It's just too much. I have two young kids under the age of three. I just want to kind of like strip it back to basics and t kind of try to stop keeping up with the Joneses because that's how it feels like if you are a presence on social media, you feel like you always have to learn this new thing and keep up and do whatever is new. And I'm just, I'm saying no to it. I'm not doing it. So I feel like my videos might be further apart for a little while. Um, my updates might be a little further apart in general, but I'm still doing stuff and I'm still creating content. And I'm still here for sure. I'm just really trying to enjoy my children and put them first because I don't think I'm going to have any more kids and they're only little for such a short time. I really don't want them to remember me always trying to work, always trying to escape being on my phone. I don't want them to have this like vision of me like staring down at my phone all the time when they think back on their childhood. So I'm really just trying to focus on the present moments with them and kind of squeeze in work where I can still. I was just on Instagram stories all the time, kind of doing mini vlogs like I should be doing here. So I'm just like trying to switch it up a little bit, do a little bit less on Instagram stories, post more like on the actual Instagram feed, how Instagram originally was, stuff like that. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, you should. I'm at Megan Bell Made. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. It makes such a difference. There are so many people who tell me they watch my videos and they're not subscribed. I'm like, why don't you subscribe to my channel? It helps me out if you subscribe. But I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>